LE Mental Health is all about making mental health care available to everyone and their new location in Tanglewood is really changing the game with the LE Match process that matches you with a therapist that best fits you. From family and individuals to couples, they provide therapy for all and they can do it in person or online and yes, they accept most insurance. Get started now with personalized therapy tailored to each individual by heading to elliementalhealth.com. That's E-L-L-I-E mentalhealth.com and just look up the Tanglewood location. What was your moment of the year in H-Town? How about the story of the year? And you know we want to know who the person of the year in Houston was. From the state's takeover of HISD to a new mayor, there was a lot that happened in 2023. Joining me to give their nominees for our end-of-year awards are dynamic media personality Antrichelle Nova and Pulitzer Prize finalist Evan Mintz. It's Friday, December 22nd, 2023. I'm Riho Ramzanli, and here's what Houston's talking about. And Rochelle, Evan, how are y'all? Man, we have a lot to talk about, but how's everybody doing? What's up? Happy holidays. Oh, yeah, it is holiday yes. season and I am loving it. I love it. It's the time of the year where we have no idea what the date is without checking. <laughs> So today's show, we're going to be doing a lot. We're going to be recapping some of the biggest stories of the year, moment of the year, and the person of the year. So I want to get y'all's opinions as well. But before we do all of that, let's jump into our biggest story of the week. Answer show, what do you got? So listen, I'm going with a little scandal, some little quiet scandal for this week because HCC has announced that their police chief is on leave pending an ongoing investigation, but they won't say why. They not tell it anybody what's going on. Now, on October 24th, Chief Michael Benford has been placed on administrative leave with pay, y'all, since October. And HCC will not answer even the basic questions about what's going on. On and HCC and this, everybody is going crazy because they're saying he will not be returning to any of uh, HCC facilities because you know they have 21 facilities and he will not be able to be in any contact with any HCC employees or take action on behalf of HCC. But ain't nobody saying nothing. Mm, that is that is some drama, and of course, this is a big deal because. Taxpayers are paying his salary right now. Mm -hmm. This is par for the course for HCC. I mean, you just got to look back year after year. There's always some sort of scandal over there. A trustee went to prison for bribery. A trustee got uh, faced allegations of sexual harassment. I mean, they got sued for uh, racial discrimination. There's always something going on at HCC. It feels like you have this problem of taxpayer dollars and not enough oversight and you're going to get something bad happening. And that's the issue that I'm having with this. You mean to tell me this man is being uh, putting on administrative leave with pay and y'all not saying nothing? Y'all not telling these people what their money is going to? And not just that, what happened? This is the chief of police. You see how they doing Chief Mary over at Texas Southern? They got all her business out here. She over there fighting for her life. But you won't tell HCC, won't tell anybody anything about what's going on. But it's important that he can have any contact with any HCC employee. He can't go to any facilities. He can't speak on behalf. But you won't say why. I smell something more than just a fruitcake around here. <laughs> so what if there is an investigation going on and that's the problem, right? Like you just got to tell us that, hey, look, there is an investigation going on. We can't reveal details right now, but there is something happening. Maybe they're playing it safe to avoid any kind of legal issues. Could that be the case, Evan? Or are they just hiding something? I mean, I've got no idea, but HCC's track record is not something that exactly builds a whole bunch of confidence. All right, we'll see how that one plays out because, yeah, that is interesting to say the least. Evan, how about you? What was your biggest story of the week? Well, I think the biggest story of the week is that Texas Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller has endorsed Jared Woodfill in the Republican Party primary against Lacey Hull in District 138, that's West Houston. Now, this is a big deal, I think, because the 
outcome of this race is going to mean a lot for the future of the Harris County Republican Party, and it's going to frame up the November election in Harris County. Why is that? Well, Woodfill is the former chair of the Harris County Republican Party. He's had his law office raided on suspicion of theft and money laundering. He had investors betting on his lawsuits to get payouts. And critically, he was involved in the cover-up of Paul Pressler's allegations of child rape. Pressler is his former law partner and longtime conservative activist who is facing litigation for raping a 14-year-old boy, a member of the church youth group that Pressler himself led. And he continued to molest him for years, and he's faced other allegations of sexual improprieties with men of all ages. And when he worked with Woodfill, Pressler wasn't paid. He was given young male assistance by Woodfill, who conveniently worked out of Pressler's home. This whole thing is sick to the core. It is the Jeffrey Epstein story from Texas politics. At a time when there's this growing political and online focus on sex trafficking and exploitation of kids, like here's a perfect real life example in front of us. And the Republicans in Harris County can't stand up and loudly say, nope, we want nothing to do with this ding dong. This really is going to be a test of their own wherewithal to be able to say someone has crossed a line. Now, I'm going to see what happens in this race. Hull could still win very easily. I mean, it's hard sometimes to be a challenger in a primary. But Woodfill is framing himself up as like the real Trump Republican who stands by Ken Paxton. And Hull is more of a speaker feeling kind of person. But if Woodfill wins, it means something for the Harris County Republican Party. And it also means... Uh, that Democrats can talk about the Republican Party in a certain way come November. Yeah, that story was unbelievable when the Texas Tribune did the big investigation and laid it all out. And we talked about it before on the podcast. And it is still unbelievable now that not much is being said about it either. Nobody's talking about it outside of the reporting that's been done. And Evan, you talk about it on the on the show, obviously. But really, it hasn't gained much mainstream attention. And this is just another domino to fall on that. No, I mean, I know I'm like a, a dog with a bone with this story. I won't shut up about it, but it's because it feels like it needs to get a whole lot more attention than what it's getting right now. And then Sid Miller, for those who don't know, Evan, can you just lay oh, out man. Sid Miller? Because he is, oh man, he is something. <laughs> oh, Sid Miller's our uh, state ag commissioner, and he's like a rodeo guy. He's flown around on taxpayer dollars saying, oh, well, I'm doing this as part of a trip to visit other states' ag commissions and talk to them. Like, no, he's going to get medical treatment. There's this whole expose where he's paying to get something called a Jesus shot to relieve his pain from his rodeo injuries. I mean, the guy had no real background in agriculture, but he ran on a platform saying, well, I'm going to represent the interests of rural Texas, and they care about all these conservative cultural issues. I remember when he first ran, and they had this guy who was like the head of the state Farmers, the State Ag Association out of Uvalde, who should have won, who should have been the guy who's endorsed by every single uh, editorial board across the state, got all the smart endorsements. But like, that's not what primary voters wanted. They wanted Sid Miller. Oh, man, that's going to be an election to watch and a primary to watch for sure. You've probably noticed that CityCast ads don't sound like other podcast ads. And that's because we're not just reciting national ad scripts. We're using our own words to talk about local businesses that we know and care about. Our ads are frequently passionate and they're always heartfelt. CityCast is doing things differently. And that's one reason we just won Ad Week's Podcast Innovator of the Year Award. This is personal for us. Our heart is in it. And when you place an ad with CityCast, our heart is in that as well. So if you're interested in getting your business or product in front of people who care about Houston as much as we do, consider placing an ad with CityCast, the podcast innovators of the year. And it's not just our city, by the way. CityCast has dedicated local teams in Boise, Chicago, Denver, DC, Madison, Philly, Pittsburgh, Portland, Salt Lake, Las Vegas, and soon Austin and Nashville. Place an ad today in the cities that matter to your company. Reach out by emailing us at ads at citycast.fm. That's ads at citycast.fm. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. 
Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. So as I mentioned, we're going to be doing a lot of year-end recaps here. So our biggest story is all we're going to talk about for this week. So let's jump into our year-end recap. Let's start with our story of the year in Houston for 2023. And Trishel, what was it for you? I'm sorry, y'all. I know I keep talking about this story, but the story of A.J. Armstrong will always and forever be top of line for me. And especially because of 2023, because if you do not know who A.J. Armstrong is, let's take it back for a second. When A.J. Armstrong was 16 years old in July of 2016, he was accused of walking to his parents' bedroom and shooting them both to death in their home, in their sleep. There are so many things that happen in this story and they could not clearly figure out who did it, but they pinned him and now he has been convicted in 2023 of murdering his parents. It has shaken me to my core because it seemed as if this young man was just framed for murder, but the evidence is coming out. Even family members have been speaking out for the past seven years saying that he did it and he is uh, definitely guilty. But this captivated the city of Houston. It was twist after twist, turn after turn, investigation after investigation, 2020 special, short movie, short stories. This took us all and rocked us. So I'm definitely voting for the A.J. Armstrong story as the top story, Houston's top story for 2023. Yeah, that definitely had everyone talking. That definitely had everyone looking into the story and learning it. It's been seven years and it took seven years to finally find out what's going to happen with AJ. And by the way, he is appealing his conviction. Armstrong will be 63 years old when he's up for parole in 2063. So um, that is a little follow up on where it stands today. Uh, I think this is just one of those cases where you really see the value of DNA testing. I mean, that's what really came into it in the third trial versus witness testimony memories are shoddy. People miss see things. They don't know what's going on, but they think they do. But DNA evidence is pretty solid. Another thing that uh, about this story is that, you know, he's now lived, serving life in prison. But while he was out for that seven years, he managed to get married and have a baby. Now he is six hours away from them, right? He is in Abilene, Texas. And I don't know, y'all. I don't think I'm ever going to let go of this story. I don't think I'm ever going to let go. I'm going to keep keeping up with this, but we'll see. Yeah, and as you should. It's a it's a really important story, and it's something that impacted a lot of people around the city in terms of just being dialed into it. So, yeah, you should be, you should be keeping up with it. I'm going to be relying on you to keep me up to date on what's going on. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Evan, what was your Houston story of the year? Oh, the big Houston story of the year is that oil and gas production in the United States broke all records, led by the Permian Basin out in West Texas, but led by the energy capital of the world here in Houston. The U.S. pumped out more oil than any other country in history, more than Russia or Saudi Arabia ever have, ever. It is incredible. I mean, our ability to squeeze oil and gas out of shale, out of these tight places, has turned geopolitics upside down, brought inflation back down to earth, and kept Houston moving forward. I think this is undeniably the biggest story for Houston, maybe one of the biggest stories for the planet. Wow, we keep producing and we keep winning here in the city of Houston. That was your big fear earlier this year was like, what happens if oil and gas production drops? I know. I've been talking about this. You know, when oil prices really skyrocketed earlier this year, people were freaking out. We were worried. You know, I remember not too long ago when you had the 2014 fracking bust and folks thought, well, is this the end of it? But we're still going strong. It's going to stop at one point or another. The energy industry is going to shift. Consumer demand is going to shift. But this gives us a longer road to transition. And, And I really think watching federal policy focus more on those carrots for new energy sources rather than sticks for the old ones. Make sure that things remain affordable now. Ensure that United States, which by the way is one of the cleanest oil producers compared to say Saudi Arabia or Russia, make sure that we dominate it and keeps our country strong and keeps the jobs here. It feels like it's good stuff all around. That is good stuff all around. Okay, my story of the year in Houston, it started in March. We heard rumors before that But it has to be the Texas Education Agency's 
takeover of HISD that resulted in Mike Miles and this appointed board that had no say from the voters being put in charge. And we've obviously talked about it. We've interviewed Mike Miles on the podcast before, but it has impacted millions of people around the city of Houston. There's been twists, there's been turns, there's been musical productions that cost (laughs) way too much. I mean, it had everything. The state takeover of HISD, but there are a few good things I want to point out. The District of Innovation, which would start school two weeks earlier, it gives more flexibility HISD in terms of hiring teachers as well. Look, districts like Fort Bend are part of that District of Innovation. Yes, look, you do start a little bit earlier, but hopefully that results in good things. At the end of the day, whether you like Mike Miles or not, the big thing is if the students benefit here, then it is a good thing. But hopefully... The voters get a say in this as well in a couple of years. I, I think that you're spot on with that. And this is a story that I think a lot of folks didn't see coming because the schools that were underperforming had improved their performance. The standards that would have justified takeover were in the past. It seemed like HISD was really improving. And then they did the takeover anyway. And the way the takeover has gone has been so chaotic. I mean, you could turn this thing into a movie and put a weird musical number in the middle and no one would believe that's how it right. actually went down. That's the truth. And as a mother who is starting her only begotten son during the midst of all of this, right? Think about the parents' reaction and how the parents feel and, and the fear that it instilled. Even in, in parents like me, like, what does this mean for my child's education? What are we going to do and what's going to happen from here? So yeah, you hit the nail on the head. This is definitely a story that was talked about all 2023. Okay, let's go to our moment of the year. Now, this can be a story. This can be an event. I don't care what it is, but give me a moment of the year, Aunt Rochelle. What was it for you? Sorry, y'all. Hands down. Hands down. The moment of the year was when H-Town's own queen mother herself, Beyonce, came to Houston, got on stage, and out of nowhere comes Meg the Stallion for a surprise performance. This was the moment of the year. It was a moment that everybody may have heard of, but I got to see it firsthand. <laughs> so it was definitely H-Town. It was North Side, me South Side. It was iconic. It was booty, 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 rocking everywhere. <laughs> it was so many things. And I even have chills thinking about it and just reminiscing about the whole thing and Megan the Stallion although she has worked with Beyonce she has made moments with Beyonce she was everybody on that stage because she fangirled out like you couldn't believe and that was definitely definitely one of the most Houston moments of the year I love it. That's such a good one right there. Booty, booty, booty everywhere might be the quote of the year, by the way, for uh, CityCast Houston and Andrew Shell. Good get job. A clip of that, you know? Just play the beginning right. of every show. <laughs> Evan, how about you? What was your moment? Okay, my moment of the year, it was my most Houston experience, but it was when they reopened the 59 610 exchange. Remember, it'd been shut down in these directions as they were doing all this construction work. They reopened it early. Everybody celebrated. And it wasn't any better. Like driving in the intersection <laughs> yeah. wasn't any better. If anything, it was worse because when they reopened some of these lanes, it let folks sort of zoom down and cut over and add all this chaos to this intersection. I mean, I've, nothing feels more Houston than spending a whole bunch of time and money and effort into rebuilding a freeway intersection. And it's just not any better. It's just still bad. I will say going 610 south from 59 north. That that ramp is perfect. I never hit traffic there. No one's nobody's going, ever that, going way. that way. It seems like who's going yeah. that way. But man, if you try to you try to go to the Galleria area off of Fifty Nine North, it could be four in the morning and you're hitting traffic there. <laughs> How do they not fix it? Oh, that that is so true. We need you need another north south connector between Six Ten and Shepherd. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Just put it through the middle of the River Oaks Country Club. No businesses are there. Nobody lives there. Just put a nice four lane road through that big golf course, and it'll solve all our traffic problems. Oh my gosh, more construction! <laughs> huh? That's what you want, Evan. More construction, but yeah, that is a pretty Houston moment right there. Okay, my Houston moment of the year. I'm going to go recency bias here, but the election runoff win for state Senator Whitmire defeating Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. So 
Look, it's been eight years since we've had a new mayor, and now we do have a new mayor elect in Whitmire. We'll see what happens in 2024. There's a lot of promises. There's transparency. There's we're going to fix this and we're going to do that. And then we'll see what really mm-hmm. happens, mm-hmm. right? Because anybody can preach it, but can you walk it? So that's my moment of the year. Now let's go to our wild card, all right? What is something that caught your attention in 2023? It can be literally anything. I don't care. It's a wild card, <laughs> Andrew Shell, Give it to me. I mean, this is pretty iconic because this just happened like, Earlier this week, Scarface showed up to NPR's tiny desk. Uh, you took my story, girl. No. <laughs> but but do you see how iconic that was? It was. He shut it down. I mean, how you just, I mean, face mob. If you do not know Houston hip hop legends, the Ghetto Boys, uh, Willie D, uh, Scarface, and Bushwick Bill, R.I.P., it was the, the iconic Houston storytellers. They were there. They taught you they brought you through the hood baby they brought you through the hood but uh scarface got on the legendary npr tiny desk and just won the entire year it's one of the most talked about it just solidified him as a prolific storyteller and just a hip-hop icon legend and i don't think people realize we almost lost scarface a couple of years ago Mm -hmm, due mm -hmm. to some uh, mysterious medical history right and he even ran for a seat for fifth war which i thought was super dope but to be on the throne right to just be here as the legendary face mob baby shut it down that's it Answer Shell, my favorite moment from that whole thing was that he just casually brings on one of the greatest producers and yes. and performers mm-hmm. in Mike Dean and just like casually introduced him. He goes, oh, yeah, Mike Dean's here as well, by the way. Right. If you don't know Mike Dean, he has produced literally every big hip hop and musician out there. Like he is the man when it comes to production, to adding keys on songs, whatever. I mean, like he's the best, right? And he just goes, oh, yeah, Mike Dean's here, by the way, and on the tiny desk. And the second part of it, he played all the hits, whether it be on my block, Smile, Mary Jane. I was like, yes. And then you know, there's some other ones that I can't say on here. And then he ended it with mind playing tricks on me. It was awesome. It was needed. And I think it just solidifies how important Houston is to the hip hop history as we celebrate 50 years of hip hop throughout the year. And he also brought Houston musicians, including, you know, uh, Houston singers, you know, people that you know, um, and the best of the best, even though some of them may be transplanted in, but these are Houston faces that you see at your local clubs and your uh, spots. This was, this just won. This was it. This was good. It was awesome. What a wild card moment. And his son was on with him too. He brought his son up. That was great. I loved it. Evan, how about you? What was your wild card moment? Oh, my wild card moment has been the rise and fall of the Colony Ridge story. I mean, at the beginning of the year, we had anti-immigration conspiracy nuts convincing folks that there's like this growing neighborhood up in unincorporated Liberty County, north of Houston, that was like this hive of lawless cartel violence and no-go zones. And a bunch of pundits and elected officials took the bait and they freaked out. Greg Abbott even put it on the agenda for a special session. And then when they finally visited in person, like, oh, wait, this is just kind of like a normal neighborhood Crime's not out of control. Things are chill. and But now, at the very end, federal prosecutors are coming in and going after Colony Ridge for white-collar crimes that Texas just didn't care about. The Justice Department and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau are suing the developers for targeting Hispanic homeowners with predatory loans, false advertising, and subpar housing as part of a big illegal land scheme. I mean, I can't think of any better microcosm of everything wrong in Texas politics and media then this whole story, they freaked out over no facts and overlooked the actual crimes happening. That is nuts. That's that, crazy. Yeah, there were actual crimes happening. And instead, we were just trying to get headlines mm-hmm. and rile people up for no reason. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Ugh. Texas politics, maybe. Okay, my wild card moment of the year. It's one that still gives me pit stains. Mm. It was the heat <laughs> dome. Like, look, I've been here since 1990. Okay, I've been through a lot of summers, y'all. <laughs> I don't remember one this hot ever. And I still wake up thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to be 115 (laughs) degrees. It's going to feel like 140 degrees. It is going to be bad out there. But the heat dome, 
not only did it cause a lot of heat on us, but also the infrastructure. Now we're seeing the effects of it, right? Whether it be from your driveway buckling because it was so hot to all the water issues and water mains breaking and pipes breaking because it was so hot and dry that everything shifted and we are seeing the results of that heat dome right now. Now, I'm I'm so curious to see what the total damage is going to be next year when we get some reports on how hot it was and how much damage it caused. So to me, it was the heat dome. It was hot. Hopefully, we never have to go through that again. I mean, I'm pessimistic. <laughs> I think we're going to be getting a lot more of this in the future. I agree. Yeah. I think in the same way that you get like cities in the in the north, like building for snow, building to repair for those winters, we got to do a better job of like building for hot summers. How do you put in more trees, more shade? How do you put in the infrastructure that kind of keeps things cool and prevents all those downsides? And how do you replace and fix all those water mains? That's going to be the billion dollar question because that's how much it's going to cost. <laughs> it's going to be important that we figure this out. All right, the moment everyone's been waiting for, the Houston Person of the Year in 2023, Aunt Rochelle, who is it for you? What? Do we even need to discuss this? Queen Mother herself, (laughs) Beyonce, baby, don't even waste your time trying to compete with B. You understand? Mother is here, and Mother will always be here to stay. She not only did a a smash hit of a concert, right? That is iconic. One of the best concerts ever. I know I was there. (laughs) I witnessed it, right? That's not something that you you can just hear about. But not only that, then she releases a movie of the concert and the movie comes out and it's one of the top five concert films ever. And then all she did was announce on her website, on the internet, that the international dates for the movie comes out and she breaks the internet because everybody is thinking there's either another leg of the Renaissance tour or these are actually the visuals. Everybody went ballistic. Do you understand? Queen Mother continues to outdo herself. The film was the piece de resistance, the concert was superb. Beyonce had a wonderful album. What more can you do? She's from Third Ward, Texas, baby. What more can you ask for? Who can top the queen? Who? 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 Not only does she belong to the world, she belongs to us here in Houston. And for that, Beyonce is the 2023 Person of the Year. Perfectly said, Aunt Shell. Nicely done. There you go. <laughs> Beyonce wins Person of the Year for Aunt Shell. How about you, Evan? Oh, the Person of the Year is mayor-elect John Whitmire. He really is. I think because he turned a lot of presumptions about how the city is going to be operating in the future upside down. Who thought that just another old white guy could win the mayor's race in the most diverse city in America? But he did it overwhelmingly. We haven't seen this kind of support since Bill White in the early 2000s when he had Saddam Hussein levels of approval. This guy has been in politics forever. He was elected to the House of Representatives in Austin in 1972, the state Senate in 1982. And there's this lesson that Houston doesn't really have the multiracial progressive coalition that you've seen develop in other cities. We're not there yet. There is still this sort of lowercase c conservative core of voters, of Republicans, of white Democrats, of older black voters, too, who focus more just on the crime and potholes issue of governance. Now, the city is his for the next four years. And like you said, We'll see what he actually pulls off, but it's going to be different than in the past. He has a stronger city council, thanks to Prop A, that allows city council members to put issues on the agenda in a more streamlined fashion. So, Whitmire, you're the mayor. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? And we will find out in 2024. To get my person of the year, you can go listen to the episode that I've linked. We talked about it on Tuesday's episode, and I gave my opinions on my person of the year Awesome, awesome episode, y'all. That was a lot of fun. And thank you so much for taking the time and joining us throughout the year, Evan and Trishel. I truly appreciate it. I love getting y'all's insights on the stories of the week. And thank you for a great year. And here's to 2024. Oh, yeah, 24. Let's do more. Uh, This has been my favorite thing of the year. It's being on the show, and I can't wait to keep doing it.
That was Evan Mintz and Andrew Shelnova. All the stories we discussed are in our show notes. That will do it for this week here on CityCast Houston. Our executive producer is Dina Kespa. Our producers are AK Al Moman and Carleon Jones. Our newsletter editor is Brooke Lewis, and the host is me, Rahil Ramzanali. Our music is by the band All the Kimonos. We're off Monday, but we'll have a fresh episode ready for you on Tuesday. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. <laughs>